today are going to kick off our first game's draft. Rengar the band from FlyQuest, Jace will follow for Team Liquid, and I imagine FlyQuest will be giving us our three standard red side bands, Camille and LeBlanc to follow, if they're going to hold to the trend. Yeah, uh, no surprises, no surprises so far. Uh, if you're willing to ban Rengar, you are definitely willing to ban uh, Camille. Sometimes teams will, you know, craft something where uh, they can try and uh, get something back and, you know, maybe have a counter, but it, there's there's no counter for Camille. Yeah, you can have lanes that um, are decent, but she still has so much potential to just absolutely take over a game. So much damage in the kit. Uh, she actually is banned out by Team Liquid here, not willing to first pick the champion. That means they have another first pick in mind here. Uh, looks like it might be jungle targeted as the Kha'Zix does fall off the Rengar. Yep, the um, band's there. Ash is definitely a slight edge over the Varus. I say the Ash and Varus in the same breath. Um, I think it does mean that FlyQuest will have to pick up the Varus here in the first half of the van phase. They still have two more to go for it, um, but no surprise there. Going for the premier tank, Maokai, uh, very strong front line. Uh, and I mean, we've seen so many games so far. It's pretty much about these five on five comps where you work through the front line, try and get to the back line. Um, you know, the Maokai and Nautilus matchup has been played over and over and over again so far. Uh, but, you know, a little bit of support flavor there as well this time. Yeah, have to be careful because it's not the AD carry that's going to kill you. It's the support there. Zyra was picked up by Flycast. We'll see what Liquid want to do with their first pick here. Looks like Fiora actually will be their lock-in. So Lolo <laughs> taking that carry now that he's seen the Maokai. All right, we get some deviation here, baby. Uh, some Fiora into the Maokai. We've seen it a couple of times, but primarily from the Korean top laners who are so confident. Uh, you know, in scaling up to that point where your true damage and your, and your split pushing are your way to win the game rather than playing that five on five front to back team fighting that uh, we were talking about. So Lorlo gonna be able to have the Fiora this time around and we get to see him again on one of those carry top laners where he has excelled in the past. Uh, we'll definitely see if there's any sort of early visit from junglers up there though. Um, I like the mind games always with Fiora and trying to bait out her repost because that is a huge difference between uh, the successful Fioras uh, and the ones that are really predictable with their repost. It just, um, she's very squishy and you can punish her early on. Uh, most of your defense is in that ability. Well, we see Rek'Sai picked up for Liquid, pretty straightforward. Varus is the same for FlyQuest. Cassiopeia ban though means that mid lane's getting some targets and Ryze actually joins that as well. No, no mid laners have been picked yet unless there's a flex coming. Right, and I think that's because of the importance of answering those two main roles that we highlighted. Um, the Maokai is such a premier tank, you need to get something early before you start getting banned out. Uh, and the Ash that we said um, need to at least be answered by Varus, even though he's a slightly less uh, contested for some specific AD carries, uh, right up there. Well, they're going to lose Orianna as well, so FlyQuest sticking to the mid lane bans. We'll see if Liquid wants to ban another one, because they're not going to get first pick here. Altec is here for FlyQuest, which is kind of like getting three bans in Syndra. Uh, looks like she's still up, and that would be a definite first pick for FlyQuest, I think, even though, oh, well, maybe it, maybe it is going to be uh, the Syndra pick up here Pretty uh, easy. for high. Yeah, I mean, they leave it up. Uh, yeah. I like I it. Every th time something is that obvious <laughs> to me, I'm like, I'm being tricked right yeah. now. What, what am I missing? But, uh, oh, yeah, they just go straight for the obvious. So let's see what Team Liquid you know, had planned, because that's they would definitely connect those dots and be expecting this picked up. Okay, another look at the Echo. I mean, this is kind of speaks to how deep the mid lane champion pulls are. That's effectively six bands away from Golden Glue, and he goes to a seventh mid laner in Echo. I, I, I do like this, you know. Um, with the changes to the backline minions as well, it, it became easier for Echo uh, to get those CS uh, as he progresses. And uh, we'll see how well he'll he'll be able to push up. It's, it's that tempered aggression. We'll see about this uh, mid lane, because we mentioned top lane might be attracting junglers, uh, but mid now as well. Well, I like the MF as a last pick here. It's very standard into the Zyra as that counter pick, but FlyQuest, yeah. again, with all the emphasis on mid lane, decided not to take it away. So I think Liquid felt comfortable getting it very late into the draft. Last Whoa! pick, Kindred, though, from Moon. Oh, oh wait. Bump. Not uh, Okay, uh, that uh, that Moon Kindred here, this is going to be exciting. Um, into the Rek side, feels like he'll be able to uh, kite it out. Man, uh, Kindred, when you have a Maokai, I think, uh, that's the important part. You have such a good front line. Kindred really does need super strong front line. So because the Maokai has been already picked, because the Zyra is also there to lend that backline defense as well, Kindred on top of it just means that, uh, you know, the Syndra and Varus will be a bit more confident there. I, I do like this new uh, look here for FlyQuest. And this is definitely the first Kindred here this season for NALCS. 
Um, I, it might actually be the first this season worldwide uh, in professional play. I'm pretty sure it is. Think you we'll, are right. We will double check that just to make sure it's not 99%, <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure that's 100% the, the first one for pro play this so, season. Okay, if you're wrong, someone has already tweeted at you <laughs> telling you just how wrong you are. Coders are going to shake hands. Really interesting draft, actually. I think that last pick, Kindred, kind of shows how you can get some advantages with that final pick. Yeah. Um, we'll see what uh, Rex I can do early on. Um, and... Uh, Maokai is definitely a good setup, like we talked about for junglers. Kindred can come in um, and hit uh, hit the extra damage here. We'll see what Moon what Moon can accomplish because last game or last series he had, he was against a sub jungler. Now he is against Rainover. Very very different. Yeah. Huge step up. <laughs> Certainly is, but we are gonna get loaded onto the game soon. I do have a question for you actually, Kobe. When we load into game, I'm glad you're here for some fun jungle because I know what Moon's running. He has an interesting summoner spell and an interesting keystone. Ooh, we'll get to the, the ghost. Ghost. We'll get to the moves. He's moving onto the Rift, and he does have Ghost here. So in out here for game one, TL versus Fly. I'm going to spoil it for you. It's Ghost Storm Raiders, Kindred. Storm Raiders, so very confident in being able to get off uh, the damage there, the burst damage, to be able to get his move speed. Well, really doubling down on move written. speed. Um, I feel like I need to... Uh, I jump over and uh, <laughs> get some uh, research here real quick to <laughs> delve into the double move speed Kindred because previously um, both options of Thunderlords and Fervor were used. Spell. You know, Fervor did get nerfed after that, so and that was the one that was definitely favored. So uh, a lot of changes to it, but uh, Storm Raiders, we'll see if he's able to proc it consistently enough. If you look at the enemy team, it looks like he should be able to, uh, barring Rek'Sai. Well, we had an early move at level one for Fly, but no one really built. We've seen a lot of kind of three-man, even five-man roams at level one trying to get some damage done, but everyone's playing relatively safe. Jungle pathing, as always, will be important at the early levels, but Moon, particularly with help, should be able to get through pretty swiftly as far as the jungle goes. Although, of course, Rek'Sai is also good at clearing. Right. Uh, let's go over some of the things, you know, that did push Kindred out of the meta, right? Um, her ability to stay healthy was hit multiple times. The heals were reduced. Uh, the camps doing more damage uh, definitely has more difficulty there. And the importance on getting those stacks uh, for your passive and for your damage uh, was pretty much uh, doubled, at least increased. So that is going to also be a focus for the camp. And we'll see how healthy he's able to stay on the clears and... Maybe we'll see a Hunter's Potion come out for him. Yeah, pretty healthy, actually. Balls gave quite a lot of help at level one, so Moon's looking good with that early red buff. We saw some aggression in bottom side, though. TL have looked so good, especially in the landing phase, and Lemon Nation eating damage. Plants will answer back. Matt actually eating a lot in trade there. And as always, the support do damage. You actually want to kill them. <laughs> Definitely true. Uh, the support could be trading pretty heavily. You know, Misfortune, we talked about that one. Uh, emerging as uh, the counter pick for a while now into Zyra, who's been the queen of those bottom lane mages. Um, you being able to use the move speed uh, and the love tap to be able to get that lane control. Not to mention, Ash at the support inside definitely helps out there. Now, uh, just keep trying to clear capture some more stuff on this uh, ghost for um, Kindred. Um, it does help you kite more effectively, like where I was talking about, trying to kite around the wreck side um, for your early game and you're dealing with that champion, um, which is extremely important to Kindred. We mentioned the safety of the back line and the, necess the, the necessity of that strong front line to hold enemies in place. Um, not necessarily going to rely on the flash and low. Uh, cooldown on that summoner as well. Meanwhile, though, Rek'Sai is invading currently into the Kindred because uh, of the weakness that uh, the champion does have early on. Gonna find that his Raptor camp was stolen away by Rainover and left behind a ward as well. Yep, so that's gonna spot him moving in. Syndra can move up if they did spot Rainover, but looks like Moon's not even gonna walk over there. In fact, he walks back to his other side of the jungle. He did get a mark early from his right side of the crab, so that was nice based on pathing, but he's gonna miss out on quite a bit here. He's trying to find camps in this bottom half of the jungle, but we can see it's empty. Yep, uh, gonna move in here. Uh, Rainover, this is one of the things that we always talk about for this player, right? You know, even though he did have a couple of those bloopers with the, you know, mechanical uh, mistakes, you know, and jumps on uh, Kha'Zix, his game plan is always set up in advance there. 
Free uh, cleared out his Raptors before going for the invade. This means that Moon is going for a gank instead. Nice stun. Ghost already popped. Golden Glue could be in trouble trying to get under the W for a shield. Oh! That is still there. Needs a few. Oh, that was the best first Blood Moon. Get your OP. There it is, Pastry. Even though uh, Rain Over, uh, the master plan, uh, eliminates most of the options for Moon to go farm his jungle, Moon is then forced into ganking. That, all that prep does not matter if your gank works out, right? It's one of the worst feeling as a jungler if you take away all the enemy jungle's options, you know, uh, encounter jungle him, but then his gank that he's forced into is successful. You know, that last hit there, able to proc uh, Wolf, and man, Moon really needed that kill, does capitalize, gets the first blood, and that will help Kindred snowballing towards the later stage of the game, which will be just fine. Great. Fade away there for Moon, he picks up his second stack, goes back actually for Berserker Greaves, so relatively aggressive boot choices here. Yeah, uh, attack speed is very important for this champion. Uh, won't be surprised to see a Rune on Hurricane. Uh, can even go more attack speed than that. Blade of the Rune King is pretty common. I have actually really liked the Black Cleavers that uh, I've seen on the few uh, solo queue, only solo queue builds, by the way. This was confirmed to be the first uh, 2017 professional uh, Kindred pick. But uh, yeah, Black Cleaver is also an option for later on uh, the cooldown and health route rather than going to pure attack speed. We'll see where Moon can go as far as more ganking or potentially just farming goes, because Rain is certainly winning the farm half of the map. Like you said, mechanically, maybe not looking as strong as he has been, but the brains are certainly still there. Bottom lane seems to have died down a bit, though, although Piglet is currently winning in CS, and of course, Rain over is back at it looking for Kindred. Going to spot Moon there with the Tremor Sense. Going to confirm that as well with a Hawk Shot from Piglet. Yeah, look at that. Rain over, not only does he have such good jungle sense, but he communicates so well with the rest of his team. Ash Hawk Shot comes through. Um, right over the top. He knows that Moon is on this camp. Uh, might go in for a chunk. He has a level advantage. And that's, they're talking about, you know, how, how much damage Kindred does take. It's a little bit too late now. Mid lane's coming over a bit too oh, 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 right oh, oh, Too late, what? Kill. <laughs> Hi, looking forward. He's got his ultimate. Golden Blue's covering. I forgot he didn't have Flash, Pastry. Uh, this is the drawback, obviously, of taking Ghost. Uh, and this has been the entire story of this early game, right? It's been this Kindred pick with this summoner spell choice. The drawback of the low cooldown is that you don't get the instant gap close. Rainover's not done either. Uh, step two of his master plan, going to attack Balls here, who does also have Flash, but uh, three members here. It's a really nice setup. Gank hit as well over the ultimate. Golden Glue gonna dive in for a trending turn. Necro as best they can. Lola slashes out Golden Glue, gets back to his ultimate, and there's another kill for Rek'Sai. Syndra is coming down, but all three members of Team Liquid can actually just group up and defend themselves, no problem. So not really an answer for FlyQuest here. The best they can get out of this maybe is Moon going to grab his stack off of the bottom scuttle grab uh, and start catching up back uh, again there because rain over uh, the hard work does pay off right you know we talked about him focusing on the camps and he has have that experience to be. all right so red buff steal into uh, the stack there for moon will probably be the play at least is able to answer the steal of rain over and not be left without a red buff yep smart pathing there but it really is a lot of early blows being traded by the junglers and Really an easy setup top lane, but a smart overall rotation for Team Liquid. And again, we talk about Rainover and his strategic presence in a game of League of Legends kind of really shows that with that great setup. Yeah, definitely true. Um, and we're seeing him punish the attempted uh, flavor pick here from Fly. We'll see if Moon is able to recover, though. You know, FlyQuest not too far in the hole at the moment, only 600 gold. Uh, it's really the experience, though, that you want to keep track of. Uh, as that is not displayed so clearly, and right over on Rek'Sai, wow. he'll be able to keep up the pace, right? Yep. That's one of the biggest bonuses about Rek'Sai, especially in the early game. He's got a huge tunnel network on the top side of the map, and they've already ganked and dove the Maokai. What you want to do here, uh, or what uh, the game plan for Team Liquid is already and probably should continue to be, is focus that area. Um, Rainover will lend more support to get this VR to the point where nobody can answer the split push, that's how you draw them across the map, and that's how you get your gains. Yeah, and it makes sense here in the bottom lane, actually, because it's been surprisingly defensive. Some pushing back and forth, but early calls for both the AD carries. CS looking nice and even. We kind of expected Matt and Piglet to win this lane, but maybe with a bit of help, they can. Good arrow, Piglet. Altex, you know, bit of trouble. Exhausted down elimination. Also under attack. Great route. Good ulti there from Altex. Gonna save it. Ooh, yeah, I like the timing. As soon as they hit level six for the AD carries, um, like you said, though, disengage ultimate there from Altec was able to land and save their lives. So the bottom lane does survive that gank, even though they had to blow both summoners on Altec. Varus also pretty vulnerable. 
Moon again, also visiting mid, but Golden Globe with his ultimate and his flash isn't really a target. And not just them, look at this Maokai coming down through the Fog of War just to lend some support. I don't think they're going to be able to dive because Golden Globe's cleared out the minion, and it's a good defense from him. Now, Balls here on the Maokai is going to really have to start worrying about his solo matchup, even if he doesn't get ganked. Even if Jungle Pressure does not arrive, uh, Lorlo is set up for success here as he is now uh, full level above as well as the extra gold. Yeah, 30 CS is really nice for Lorlo as well. Golden Glue is actually going to make his way over to the blue buff. We're never going to help him out. Definitely going to hand off that blue buff and into uh, this, this idea that we're talking about, um, which is pretty common of you know, playing off the strong side of the map. Yes, you know, you can set up weak side traps and uh, weak side counterplays, but uh, the most straightforward way to play League of Legends, right off of your strong side, on the top side, force the action around uh, this split pushing Fiora, who's gaining an advantage. Yes, you'd like him to, you know, go purchase first, but uh, continue to pressure on that side because Rainover has already weakened the jungle. Um, and it just really uh, is exponential gains there if they're able to keep forcing. Well, good news is certainly here in mid lane from Flyquest. So high on the Sidra has a very healthy CS lead. Hasn't been able to leave the lane just yet. Golden Blue's actually got a good roam off, but High certainly, if he can get out of this lane, can make it an easy gank impact. That is a super good point to bring up, Hey Street. Um, that is their point of strength at the moment. High level nine on the Syndra, as you said, uh, definitely has a lot of money in his pocket. Uh, once he, she goes to be able to purchase uh, the extra amp tome and short boots. Oh! Expecting them to continue to run. Oh, the extra one's in, but Rainover's here. I like the commitment, but good presence there from Rex side <laughs> and be like, hey, 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 that's my Eddie Carry. Stay off. The old zoning Ash Arrow. Um, maybe they they just walk right right out of the bush. But uh, not gonna not gonna be able to convert on this spot. Ooh, play. Lower X side from outside. Piglet trouble. There's the roots in as well, but Piglet's gonna live nice ulti covering their come the reinforcements as well right after that moon coming up the jungle they're trying to fight that vision war and gain high a little bit more safe space to work with try and play around their syndra uh ultimate is down though which is key and that is the big ability that's gonna be able to get them those pickoff skills that they need golden glue also clearing out this ward so kind of general vision presence is looking nice right over again in towards moon's jungle here gonna try and steal the red buff away does that's not nice. get it nice might there from moon to secure it for himself, but like you mentioned, this is the side he wants to play around. He'll visit bottom lane when the cooldowns sync up and they can make an attempt, but it's very like low risk, high reward. Exactly. What they want to do is eliminate the presence of a teleport from top lane from FlyQuest. Then you get to transition your your area of power from top side anywhere you want, because you unlock Lorlo. He can just split push and gain multiple advantages, uh, you know, or join in for the extra damage that he's got. Balls right now, hugging his turret though, playing defensively, and Rainover does not move in. No, not getting too far behind in CS either, he's actually catching up every now and then. He, he will be behind in the matchup, that's kind of expected, but in general, the gold is actually very close. Only a thousand here as Piglet taking a bit more damage once more. Looks like Lemonation signing it up. Piglet goes down to Altec, Matt trying to cover, but he gets exhausted. Moon's down here as well. Kindred ultimate ready. He is going to die. Yeah. Matt, he's just absolutely dead. We'll go down to Moon. TP in from TL, but he's out scot free. The Ghosties out of there quick. Uh, the teleport is cancelled as well, and that is going to mean they are going to pressure for this turret. Is Rainover going to try and uh, just defend this as Rek'Sai? 
Uh, we'll see how much of harass they can put down on him. Burning down this turret, racing for first turret gold. Minions down here as well, so they could maybe get him, but the health bar's a little too low, I think. The, it's because Golden Glue dropped out of Vision into the Fog of War here. You know, Team Liquid were able to reclaim Vision around this mid lane. If the Echo comes, then all three of those people down bottom are dead because it's an easy flash uh, from Rek'Sai to knock them all up. So they didn't want to take that risk of dying and they won't be able to get the turret. But here it is again. They were able to get the kill and that's the double flash for the kill. Attempted answer here from Matt uh, with the ultimate, but doesn't mean much as Moon is heading down the, the lane and able to easily chase down that kill. Plus still has the ultimate to uh, utilize. Ooh, Golden Blue looking for something back. Hi did stun him. The ultimate not committed. Level 11 for high is nice, though, because the ultimate's going to be doing a big burst of, or extra burst of damage now that he's ranked it all the way up. And 40 CS ahead is nice. I mean, it is good that Golden Blue is attempting to leave his lane, but when it's not successful, top lane was, but bottom, the bottom lane attempt was not because they backed off. He's just going to fall further and further behind. Yep, definitely going to have reduced threat there uh, while high is building, but high hasn't been able to put this money to use quite yet. He's hit level 11 now. Huge, huge extra damage uh, in the extra level for his ultimate. And he's just itching to use it. We'll see what FlyQuest can do to try and set something up. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult because Maokai's a bit more squishy than usual. But Balls is, is investing in a bunch of armor because he's trying to face off for Sora right now. And it's good for Balls that Golden Blue is behind because that is the main aim. Yeah, it looks like the lane teleport from Golden Glue and the expected blue gun takes actually to give FlyQuest access to this Drake here. Mount Drake early is nice. We haven't seen turrets fall just yet, but High has been poking down mid lane. Bottom lane we saw was almost taken. They can start to open up this map. That's great news for the Kindred and the Syndra that kind of want to move around and try and get more picks. Yeah, Drake off the table is very good because, you know, Mountain would add more pressure to the Fiora split push that already should be able to take its toll. Uh, they're pinging on it right now. This would still be that first turret gold because, remember, bottom lane was defended by Rainover and the threat of mid lane. So they're going to move in for it and actually capitalize on that now. Lorlo is pretty much at the point uh, where it's very difficult to put a stop to this, even if you do send multiple people up. So maybe we'll see extra vision be uh, put here from Team Liquid on that top quadrant and allow Lorlo to continue to abuse. Uh, and the thing is, if FlyQuest make a play, they kind of need the Maokai teleporting to be that front front point uh, front man. But um, if he does, Lorlo takes very, very quick uh, turrets. And unfortunately for Balls, he's really just got components Bottom right lane. now. It looks like Lennon looking again. Piglet, nice arrow. There's the ultimate from Matt. Moon trying to get it down. Altax snaps Piglet on the other side. Good offer from Lemonation. going to knock him away, but Moon forced to burn the ulti. Piglet down, though. That's great news. As now Balls has made his way in. Lolo, though, looking for the flank. Finds Lemonation. Oh! Lost the kill. Needs to get it down and does get it. Balls can't quite protect him. Matt still trying to fire some shots in as Rainover looking in for Balls. I'm not sure they can dive here, but Rainover's going to try it. Gordon Glue is coming to try and chase him down. Meanwhile, Balls is by himself under the turret. Lolo! Lolo! Oh, he's okay. The life steal from the Ravenous Hydra is nice as Balls now. Gonna get dove in for Golden Glue. Proto, but Pop, there's the kill. Oh, and High still sitting in the mid lane. So for FlyQuest, he's gonna be able to get that turret he's been whittling down uh, against the melee Echo in the mid lane here. And he finally does claim that, but Team Liquid, they get kills on the bottom side, plus it's gonna be an even turret trade uh, in the end. And another, you know, initiative taken here from Team Liquid. Let's take a look at this. Um, it's actually FlyQuest who have the roam down from Moon, and Piglet almost able to dodge that, but not quite on the edge. Walks back in. I'll take it to kill right before uh, Moon pops the Kindred Ultimate. That was incredibly close, by the way. Uh, but Lorelo flashing over to make sure he's able to proc the Grand Challenge for the extra healing uh, and secure that kill as well. As you said, Golden Blue has been the one to roam first over and over and over. So Echo able to zone off those two damage dealers. Uh, threatening the kill there, and means that Balls, there was no way he was going to escape this with his life. Take a turret as well, so all looking nice and good there for Team Liquid, who are now 2,000 gold ahead. Lolo going to continue to get stronger at 102, and now the Phage building in towards that Black Cleaver. Fiora does need some items to get going, but two is kind of a good point, and three is where things start getting exceptionally tricky, and we've already seen Balls 
1v1 just cannot handle this lane matchup despite the fact that he's getting CS where he can and that was a good teleport through bottom lane. So Rainover have to commend him for showing presence where necessary. Went top early to try and apply some pressure with that dive with a bit of help from Glue and just went top to make sure the turret went down and Lola got extra gold. He wastes no time. He's like the picture of efficiency. Definitely love watching Rainover on his, you know, safe champions and his comfortable champions from the jungle. He's just, Rek'Sai doesn't even have to worry about thinking about any of, uh, you know, the flashy plays or anything. And just plays out, yeah, plays out the map uh, according to plan. Pretty big lead, actually, for him. And he's main tank here um, for the team as well. Pure tank stats, uh, as usual, being built from him. You can see the vision also moving up as a result of this for Team Liquid. Well, looks like the an objective's on the way, but Cloudjack's not there for a while. I think both teams are looking for a pick. Mid lane's open though, Alte gets it, and now High looking for Matt, does find him with a stun. But he's gonna flash out of a High once it. he does actually secure the kill on the other side. Lolo, meanwhile, has come through, and Moon is gonna try and do the damage. Alte maybe can get a snipe down. here as well, and Piglet's forced to flash. Lolo still getting chased down. Good ult there, he's actually gonna keep Rainover out of the fight, and balls his late. Blast gun gets two away. And now Rainover with Glue very safe in mid lane, despite there being no turret. Things under Baron already. There are uh, wards here for Team Liquid. But as you saw, uh, Lorlo, not only was he chunked out heavily, no teleport uh, on cooldown at the moment. And FlyQuest do have Maokai, who can tank Baron very easily for this bait. It's a Highland Classic. Rainover actually going to get chunked, but Golden Glue's quite threatening here. They are going to keep on the Baron, though. They've zoned out Rainover and no vision yet for TL. Yeah, Team Liquid looking to trade objectives here and go for uh, some damage on the mid lane. They actually don't come Ooh, in. Oh, Golden Glue! Lost to pull his way out. High not going to take all the health and damage, so not too bad. But a Baron take there for Fly is really nice. Definitely good for FlyQuest to get right back in this game. Uh, yes, Team Liquid, after they take this turret, will be ahead technically, but FlyQuest with the Baron buff will be able to have that Baron power play. Try and uh, collect some of this outer gold that is still standing on top and bottom. So how did this start? Because it was just AD carry ultimates everywhere. Yeah, this is the classic uh, Ash and Misfortune double ultimate, but it was in an open lane with no turret at their backs. High, we talked about how much power was in that Syndra and how much was building. He just gets to unleash it all on the support. Perfect target there, the MF uh, does get that first kill and then they chase him through. So this is that gold that we talked about FlyQuest recouping. There's one turret that does go down. They're just going straight up mid lane actually. Trying to get through to the inhibitor. They have two marksmen as well, so these will mount. And Lolo's bottom lane does have teleport. We'll need to use it soon, because this siege is going to get very tricky. Yeah, trying to just wave clear here. Team Liquid's plan is to play to their strength. The Fiora is still, you know, an ahead Fiora with the split push, taking down uh, the counter turret up on the bottom side. And Lolo is able to claim that. The problem will be if FlyQuest pull the trigger, and you know that high as high dollar. There he goes, looks for misfortune, doesn't quite get Matt in the snipe from Altex, barely not enough. Arrow hits onto Moon. There's a teleport in from Lolo. Moon gonna knock it off the stun, actually needs to be careful, but can't quite use the ultimate high. Diving in his blue, looks for a Moon, forced to ulti back when his team's not covered. Lemonation takes the golden blue ulti from Matt. Does the damage as well, two kills there for one as TL do take the advantage in the fight. Rainover still moving forward, Moon awfully low, the slow doesn't quite land in onto Balls. He knocks back Rain over. Good defense so far, but Lolo does want more. No flashes left, though, and that's going to be it. The hardest thing about that play is the timing of the flank. Timing it with the teleport coming in from Lorlo, uh, because these two solo laners are damage dealers, right? Golden Glue arriving perfectly right behind the team. They're able to section off the back line. Uh, and uh, the ultimate from Matt meant that there was no space for them to maneuver. Uh, so pretty good knock up there from Rainover coming through. And they are able to take out the back line. High in Altec. Uh, taken down, even though it's just a two for one. Uh, huge stop there for Team Liquid as they take off the Baron buff. Not only uh, that, but they gain the map control after defending that Siege and claim Cloud Drake. And like you said, Baron doesn't mean that Fly was ahead when they got it, but depending on the damage they could do with it, they could get ahead. Unfortunately, Team Liquid know this and this happens. Exactly. The timing again of this flank. Golden Blue arrives right when Lorlo does. He teleported on the Rex side tunnel uh, and they're able to section off all of the threats. Moon gets chunked out so early under the turret because of Piglet's arrow. Uh, and then it made it pretty easy for the other two carries to be funneled into one spot where Rainover does the double knockup because of Matt's zoning ultimate and the damage is there from the two carries.
Well, out of turret, it's pretty easy to take with a couple of Baron Bust left here, so FlyQuest will take a bit of extra gold for themselves, keep the gold lead close, but Lolo still back in bottom lane. TL, they know the Baron has uh, dropped on some members because of the kill them, and it's going to be running out here. I don't think FlyQuest can do too much damage despite the early Baron. Definitely true, especially because they still have this pain of Lorlo on Fiora, split pushing constantly. Bottom lane is up to the inhibitor turret, so Lorlo threatening over and over again. Uh, what they do need, though, is a little bit more uh, ward coverage uh, so that they can see the transitions of FlyQuest. When you do have the pressure like this, uh, you want to get wards in the enemy jungle because you're the ones with the Ash Arrow. That's a bit longer uh, pick potential than the Varus, which is more for the team fighting. But uh, right now, they're going to the 1-3-1. One, one. They have the double teleports uh, on cooldown, so uh, they don't really want to have the tele, you know, have the fight engaged. The mid lane three have to disengage as soon as they see any threat. That means that Ash has to play very careful. And Rainover gets stunned. Piglet potentially ready. Rainover nice and tanky, so don't take too much damage from high, despite the fact that he's actually quite strong. Lee Andrews now completed with the Morale Nomicon means he's doing work. Golden Glue though is actually supporting behind here. Maokai. Ball's moving into position. They've caught Rain over yeah. and they're trying to pick him up. No teleport for Lorlo. No good news. There's the lockdown onto Rain over. Coach of the Colossus keeps him alive a little longer. Rain over will fall though as the shutdown comes from Altec. Matt now zoned completely out of the way. The dangers of your 1 3 1 when you don't have teleports to come in and uh, you know fight the emergency fight when you get picked off. Matt. Uh, <laughs> he's not going to suicide. He's going to recall. Lemon Nation trying to find him. Oh, like, okay, 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 okay. We're done. We're right. done. Goodbye. That, this is what we expected the, the execution, but uh, almost able to get out. The minions it. gave it away. They did lose one kill for it, which is not too bad, right? That was a good scramble from Team Liquid. Uh, and they've bought enough time where those teleports are going to come off cooldown very quickly. So, uh, And they left behind a bunch of those wards we talked about in their jungle, you know, once those teleports are ready, that's where the big threat of the Ash Arrows come because you can get those picks, uh, you can see the numbers van advantage in advance, uh, and then you get to choose which one of those ones you actually get to commit to because uh, if you commit to one of those blindly, then you might be running into the full five-man squad. And even though Maokai has been behind all game uh, in this you know, heads-up fight, this FlyQuest squad you know, is still very sturdy and they're not even behind in gold. Uh, for it by any reasonable margin anymore. No, compositionally, uh, Team Liquid have to be so careful because if they don't pick off a piece of this team fight comp, you're going to get shredded between Zyra AoE, Double Rune and Zyra Game Marksman, and just a Maokai being the front line. So Team Liquid know they want to play the split push game where they can, can't force an overextension, and TL's defensive and offensive play, making sure they're going at the right time on the right targets, is kind of the reason they're still just ahead in this game. Yes, sir. Lorlos is off cooldown and Golden Glue's just about, so they keep up the pressure here. Baron is coming up as well in 50 seconds, so uh, if they can really use that 1-3-1 pressure to get the extra vision advantage, they're getting many flank areas. Good QSS from Altec. High looking for a pick. He wants Matt. He's going to do the damage. Ulti gets him through the exhaust on Rain over. He's going into the back. Lolo looking to dive in as well. Finds Altec behind. Starting out Piglet. That's the first damage. High gets the double kill. Will go down, but that might turn the fight. Elimination, though. Plus the flash out of the way and balls his lane. Proto Belt's massive damage is in there. And Golden Glue is going to try and keep it alive. He ulti's out as Lolo a little too low. Rain over also going down as the Kindred does have the damage. Balls gets another one. That's a mess of a team fight. And that was with out balls at the start of that fight for FlyQuest. This five on five we're talking about, most of the power does come when they've got him on the front lines. This was a pretty good flank from Team Liquid, uh, but a couple of missteps there in the beginning and FlyQuest, they've got the extra damage still from their jungler. Uh, as we expected, that Runon's Hurricane did come in and Moon is able to add a DPS behind balls once he finally does arrive. Let's take a look at this though, because uh, they actually go for this without having Golden Glue commit at the start and he does walk down. Meanwhile, Hi easily able to take out the backline, and since Rainover wasn't able to get over there for the stun, uh, he's able to take out two for one. So by the time Balls does arrive, even though everybody else is taken out, uh, Moon's DPS means that no Team Liquid member can really commit to this, as uh, the lockdown of Maokai is just too much. That's why we emphasize so much. When you pick Kindred, you need that stable front line, uh, and as soon as the three got there, no problem. Arrow lands, he hits high, stun's still good, slow's gonna land, but high's like, all right, I'll just kill you for it, maybe. Piglet taking chunk and Golden Blue, what's all in? Oh, oh, oh. Taken down, barely misses the kill. High gonna get up for the ulti as Rain over snaps him with a pray stick. Elimination, now low as Moon, he's chasing in, he's doing so much damage. 
But FlyQuest, no, they can't overextend. Whew. All right. The uh, By the way, by the, all this action is happening in mid lane. Lorlo, Lorlo. is still <laughs> on that split plus duty. And he's about to make it all the way up to the inhibitor turret at the moment. So mid laner is being traded. Uh, not too big of a deal there. Meanwhile, some some action actually being... Uh, yeah, all right. They're just fighting over those wards. Yeah, uh, Baron on the Baron pit. Back uh, up again. That's really what you want to... Um, uh, push on the bottom lane more consistently because Baron buff adds that cross map threat that Team Liquid can also try and pull back to. And that's where you see the Ash Arrow pick potential really come into play. Yeah, you can see that Team Liquid didn't have to win both their teleports in the last team fight either. So Lolo does have his, which is probably the most important one, given that they're trying to make this bottom lane split push to Baron cross map play. Whew. All right, now that we have you know, a, a little bit of a lull in the game. I'm going to try and uh, uh, clear out the vision here after uh, Team Liquid go to recall. Um, I just have to say that this is a lot better than so many people predicted for FlyQuest, right? Team Liquid, um, especially after their strong performance versus CLG, uh, looked definitely like a top, uh, top table team. Um, and FlyQuest were predicted by so many to be, you know, bottom few uh, this season in the LCS. But coming out swinging here, in their first game versus Team Liquid. We never stunned actually there by High, who's got the Void Staff added in. So even to the tanks, High's actually doing significant damage. Level 16 snacks as well for that max rank ultimate. And we've seen that, you know, Matt, Matt and Piglet in particular are the targets that High's really looking for in a lot of these fights. And he will comfortably pop them, some of them even through exhaust, depending on how the combo starts. Yeah, and the back line has been uh, the weakness here, the ones that are taking a beating. The uh, Piglet Matt combo uh, are getting targeted out with most of that damage. Uh, since it's not, you know, that standard sort of uh, setup that they're looking for. Meanwhile, so much gold is on this Fiora that's split pushing. And they really want to make that uh, where they are able to create their advantages. Rest of the squad here just trying to poke around mid lane, keep a little bit of the vision, uh, spam the Hawk shots so you know that they're not. Uh, Starting up that Baron. Meanwhile, Lorlo is taking his toll. Oh, all in Bulls at the tower dive. That should be a kill. Bulls just can't compete with the damage. Lolo just keeps going for it. The GA is going to pop, and Lolo so healthy already. They actually all in for the Baron, but now Raynor trying to get his way in. Knocked up, stunned there with a the knock up from the Strangle versus Golden Blue. Dives into the back. Oh! He will barely take a highest move. Doesn't quite save him. He moved out of the ultimate, and Golden Blue is going to get saved. Style ultimate at the end there for the kill. And the game breaks open. Team Liquid win on both sides. You use the Baron for the cross map pressure like we're talking about, but that's not even taking into account that Lorlo took down the Guardian Angel of Balls and almost the turret afterwards. Just pulls the minion wave. He's got so much lifesteal with the Spirit of Azad driving us Hydra. He's just going to hit this turret. He takes it down, and now Balls is in trouble again. Can he escape, though, because uh, Varus has spawned. Lorlo go for the kill that first. going to be the kill. He moves the last vital out of the way. Repost is good. That should be a down. Now he's healing up Altec. You better run. Oh, oh Lolo wants it. Going for it all. Kill should be in there. Last vital did Lolo. Dives double in him. Everything. Six and Zero for Lorlo is Lemon Nation gonna be able to tag him. It's not enough. He walks out. No health, no mana. Still gonna be able to uh, survive here. And that means that Team Liquid take everything in one fell swoop. Team fight at the Baron. Split push victory for Lorlo. Forces the recalls plus Baron afterwards. And he's still got teleport just to make it all so easy for Team Liquid. Baron's gonna go over. Gold lead is massive now at almost 7,000 up. Lola goes back, buys another damage item, and let's watch this madness again. This is why you invest in the Fiora early on in the matchup. Uh, he has reached the point of unstoppable split pusher. Takes down Balls. You know, Balls doing his best to hug that wall, trying to hide his vital, but doesn't matter because Lorlo gets the kill on him in the end, and Flash is answered here, so he's able to even go for the double Nexus turret dive. You see every uh, step that he takes as well uh, goes back for the extra life on the minions, and that enables him to escape with, as you said, not only his life, but his teleport. Well, really good looking there for Team Liquid as they've got everything they need. Lolo didn't get the inhibitor, actually. That's what he missed. So he's going to go back for it now that he's got Baron buff and an extra item. So I'm sure this is going to be fine. FlyQuest couldn't stop him 1v1 or 2v1. They'll work it out, I'm sure, as Team Liquid, I assume, are going to move the rest of them to the top half of the map. All right, Team Liquid need to keep up the pressure here. Uh, returning to the split push, no surprise there. Baron is going to empower this split push tremendously, by the way. That means that it'll probably be a forfeited outer tower here. And FlyQuest, they're just going to have to you know, choose their point 
their engagement very, very carefully. Uh, because if you send so many members down here, the Baron Empowered guys are going to run straight into the base. Moon is on the chase, and he pops Ghost to go for this. Maokai's on the follow, too, so Lorlo going to burn the ultimate for move speed. Use the QSS as well, and now still slowed down. Lorlo got to be careful, repose away. That might be enough to get himself out. Very slick, and you can see Team Liquid, they're just pushing. As I said, if you commit too many people down to the split pusher, you know, they get some damage there with the Baron buff onto the inhibitor turret. Uh, maybe it wasn't too big of a cost for FlyQuest, because they were probably already going to forfeit the outer turrets, uh, and it's really the inhibitor one that they, they really are going to rely on. So they went for a gamble there. That was one of those calls where if you get something out of it, it's huge for you to try and come back. But, uh, get oh, that's something. Hyde just assassinates Piglet. There you go. Caught in transition from top to mid lane. One through one was the call for Team Liquid, but you cannot misstep there on Piglet. Too far forward, his fifth death of the game. Most of them to high. Yeah. <laughs> Syndra picking on the AD carries here in 2017. No problem. Uh, meanwhile, though, the rest of the team for Team Liquid uh, avenging the sacrifice of Piglet. Uh, going down again, you know, they have full map control, plenty of vision, so for Piglet's sake, hopefully it doesn't happen again, but uh, there are plenty of wards there up on the top side as well. Drake definitely going to go over, and Team Liquid add that one to the bag. That was sick. Yeah, just a good stun there from High. Uh, watches the last area that he left and lands the stun, plus flashes over to complete the kill. Now he is flashless, though, on the Syndra for the really important engagement as we said, Team uh, FlyQuest, they still have to pick this really crucial moment. Um, when Team Liquid are again returning to their split push and they 4-1, there's not a lot of time because they already know that Balls isn't going to be able to hold this Fiora uh, on the one side, and it's going to be up to them to make that engagement happen. And the Team Liquid, they actually don't have Baron buff for that much longer. You can see it's almost run out there on Lolo. So the Baron actually didn't do too much damage, but Flycoast will still have to contend with the split push. It was already troublesome before they collected the buff. The thing that's kind of nice is that it gets a little harder to push in once the map gets this small, because realistically, Flyquest only have to defend just their base area, which for them is actually quite narrow compared to how wide Liquid have to spread out. So we've seen that if Piglet does miss double people out of position, Flyquest can capitalize very simply with their pick. Yep. Gotta look on the bright side here. Uh, the less area of the map you control, the less area of the map you have to protect. Hey! <laughs> you just lose all the objectives, it's fine. Yeah, we'll see if it's gonna turn into anything because they're going for it on the bottom side. Lolo getting slowed, but he's okay. You can see again, Fly constantly just committing people to this Fiora, and Lolo knows he doesn't need to leave. Golden Glue's also here as well. I think Tim Liquid realized that staying a little closer together in two lanes is a little better than three right now. And look at that gold graph. This is where the explosion of the split push pressure resulted in uh, Baron buff on one side here for Team Liquid and Lorlo just doing work inside FlyQuest base. We'll see if FlyQuest can actually, you know, rally here under their base though, defend the Alamo and come out with a five on five victory because, you know, that can easily turn it. We've seen so many turnarounds here, especially today in the North American LCS. Uh, you know, if you do have a team fight comp, yeah, there is always that chance. And that is the comp FlyQuest have gone with. TL has shown that they can fight relatively well together. I mean, Fiora is a champion you can bring to the team fights. This is not as straightforward as, say, the Hyper Tank on Maokai. And Team Liquid are actually playing back pretty safely. Didn't find a way in. They know Baron's up in a few minutes, so they have to reset and go back for the objectives. Yeah. The key thing here, we are looking for Team Liquid. Yes, uh, we're pretty decided on they are top of the table team. You know, uh, up in the top. Probably 33% at least. Um, but how effectively are they going to be finishing out games, right? Uh, they did have some hiccups yesterday uh, that they'd like to clean up. And starting out today, definitely looks good for themselves uh, in the split push. But we'll see as the vision still being worked on. They would like to be able to pressure again, very similar to last time when this Baron spawns in a minute and 20 seconds uh, with Lorla's pressure now on the turretless inhibitor which should, uh, you know, expedite things. Yep, teleports up as well for everyone, so people will be able to make the necessary visits to lanes and kind of rotate around. Moon's also got 
four damage items, and Alsex kind of getting stronger as well. So all the damage is there for FlyQuest if they can find a fight on their terms. It's just not been the case so far, and Team Luke could have been very methodical about pushing them around the map, making sure they take the objectives, and again, you can kind of see that presence of Rainover, at least in how he wants to play and call the game. Team Liquid seemed very confident in playing this sort of style. Lol has been heavily invested into this game and given a lot of responsibility on a pick like Fiora. And so far, so good, but FlyQuest, High knows that it only costs one, only takes you one fight to win a game of League of Legends. Yeah, and plus he knows that uh, we're sitting on red side for FlyQuest. We've got a Varus and a Zyra and a Syndra who can poke very effectively over the Baron wall. They can also defend very effectively in these small openings at the base. So even though uh, the pressure here is uh, on Team Liquid, you know, to finish this game out, um, FlyQuest. As you said, they've got less area to defend, and they've got a decent uh, arsenal here as far as champions pick for poking around. The problem will be if they have zero vision, it becomes fairly risky to move their way over there. And this is a good example of just that. Does Team Liquid know that it's go time? The Baron is alive. Hi, oh, you actually check the Baron very smartly, does not go any further, because if they're not there, he doesn't care. Yep, not there, but immediately going to go clear out that Scrying Orb, and there's no extra Scrying Orb here for FlyQuest. So Lemon Nation, the squishiest, going over there. I believe, uh-oh, there's one. It's going to get chunked out a little bit. There's no Ash Arrow, though. I guess that uh, the positioning for Team Liquid was not ready to, uh, you know, nail him. But uh, all in all, they just need to waste time, because Lorlo so far ahead of balls that the inhibitor will go down. Hyde's moving over to actually cut off Lorlo. It's going to be the 1v2. They're forcing the Baron. They have to go for it, but they need to kill Lorlo quickly. Baron started by Team Liquid as Golden Goo dives in. They've got plenty of damage to take this out, but actually disengage. Yeah, see, you have to be pretty worried about all the extra poke that is going to come through. Meanwhile, they're playing the game on the top side. You know, Lorlo was able to just walk away as soon as Hyde did collapse, and he's confirming that, yes, there's still two up here. The push and pull, very tentative here from Team Liquid. Um, and a little bit wary to actually pull the trigger here and force it. Going back for one more purchase first. You know, we talk about this, but they're getting to the full inventory spaces. Yes, Team Liquid have had a lead ever since that explosion, but we're nearing the point where FlyQuest, because of inventory space, are going to catch back up uh, once their gold max is out here, and they're already on their last slots. Team Liquid have pretty much filled in everything here. So the next team fight is very crucial for Team Liquid. It might feel a little closer than they would like. Moon actually going to check Vision over there by taking down the Skry's Bloom. And Elder Dragon's up as well. Looks like Golden Glue and Lolo are actually going to try and do this. So I, I like this play. The two teleports are going to try and solo the buff. This is the advantage when you're the one that has had map control for the whole game. You're the one with the split push threat. It's not just Baron. There are multiple end game objectives now that Elder Dragon has been added. Now they're trying to force on the bottom side, but Cloud9 aware of themselves and use one of their scrying orbs down there. Yeah, it's highs again, and his presence of mind. Again, we talk about his the legacy of his captaincy and shot calling and how he just knows the, what's happening in a game. That's two times now that he knows exactly what's going on, has checked, and FlyQuest have acted accordingly. Yet Team Liquid have three points to pressure, and they're spread out in that triangle across the map. Baron, Elder Dragon, and this exposed inhibitor. They're moving from point to point. Now it's Team Liquid on the inhibitor, and they've engaged. Early zone is from Golden Blue, but he's got his ultimate. Lolo actually just wants to take it. Golden Blue's gonna try and zone out high. Damage is there, he pulls back away, and Lolo does get the in-hit ball. Still fighting away, but the stun is going to come through as well. I like this that they've committed more members uh, to this point. 2v2, they're able to take the inhibitor down, and Rainover just needs to escape because they got the key objective. Super minions now flooding through the bottom side. Makes it so much easier uh, to go after one of the neutral points next. And I could only cover so much that does kind of do the right thing. They lose the minimum, I would say, but that bottom inhibitor is still tricky as Team Liquid can kind of go back to the same plan, but it's going to be even harder for FlyQuest to overcome now. Definitely true. I really like the call of sending your second split pusher there to mirror so that you can push through the two-man defense of FlyQuest, and they are able to extract both members as well. So right back to the old game plan. Hold on <laughs> to the crucial summoners as well. So we're kind of all set up back around the Baron Dance. Man over just clearing out some vision. Tim Liquid do have supremacy here, and Lolo actually looking for a solo onto the Elder Dragon. It will take a while, but he can do it. Yeah, he definitely can do it. We'll see how good High's game sense is again, as you referred to it before. Because remember, there are so many things he has to worry about. With the multiple points here, uh, and all the other members of the Team Liquid squad showing, 
That's why they're showing on purpose. They showed their dual lane top side, as well as a few mid. Uh, means that it's very difficult to keep track of both objectives at once. And it looks like he's going to be able to complete the solo, whereas FlyQuest are more worried about the Baron. And they're going to try and at least take that opportunity to move in and clear out King Wards and Baron Fit. Maybe they kind of snuck in as well, so he's actually going to make sure he's here to smite the objective, which is nice. Now FlyQuest are going to know, but they've started Baron themselves. Teleport's coming in, but it's going to be too late. The Baron's dead, but it looks like things are already too low. Arrow finds in and gets moved, but Altec getting low. Ultra Moon's going to save him, and Golden Glue makes his way out. That's a good offer from Matt. They're trying to line it up, but a great stuff from High Cancel. The Lemonation is going to die, and they're trying to get out of the pit alive. Piglet oh! on the other side goes down to High once again, but Moon is going to fall. Ball's going to get slain there as well, and it's just so much damage. Lolo looks for the final kill, but it's Matt that gets it. Ball's the only one left. That's not. That's going to be the ace as TL moved back in to take down the Mika for, I believe, the second time. No, never mind. Oh, it is. They got the GA, and now Golden Glue's going to tell you in and end the game. And what an intelligent game from Team Liquid. They are forcing FlyQuest hand again and again as soon as they got their advantage. Very nice victory here in game number one. And man, Team Liquid are starting out the season on fire. Yeah, it's going to be the Nexus going down. Team Liquid looking good. So much fun to see the two minds battle between Rainover and High, but Team Liquid, they had a better lead. They played it very smart, and Lolo, oh my goodness. Another flawless looking game. 6 0 6 on the Fiora. Huge play in the bottom lane to just break it all open, and Team Liquid knew they could win from there. Played it slow, but played it correctly. Honestly, when people talk about how Rainover changes the team, you know, and his communication, uh, and how he sets up his game plan so far in the future, uh, everyone's like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, rain over, good brain, right? But this, this was, this was such a clear difference from the previous way that Team Liquid, um, you know, played the game. And Lorlo's split pushing was amazing. They committed resources to him early. Rain over bullies out this Kindred jungler early on, goes in counter jungleism. Even though Kindred got the godsend of the first blood for that gank that he was forced into, uh, rain over still. They stayed his line, stayed the course, farming out the jungle, counter jungling, top lane focus, um, and man, what just all according to plan right there, really nicely executed. Yeah, that's kind of what it felt like, and we're actually going to take a look at some of the things in that game to see how it all worked out, because Team Liquid, they, they had their explosive moments. We've seen split push first team fight for ever, pretty much in League of Legends history, and TL just knew that they never wanted to force a fight where it was pure 5v5. Definitely true. All right, let's take a look at this replay. This is at 17 minutes. This is the bottom lane collapse, if you remember. Uh, it ends up being a two for one. This is where Piglet tries to dodge the Zyra uh, root, but walks back into it a little bit early. Even so, though, you know, and he ends up getting sniped. Uh, Moon there takes a bunch of damage, not able to stay in for the heal. And so that means the back line all get chased off. Lemonation dies to Lorlo, who procs the extra heal here. And again, this is one of the reoccurring things was the roaming from Golden Glue. Uh, you notice High on the mini-map is pushing for the turret, and he eventually does get that turret, but, uh, you know, so much side lane pressure there from Golden Glue as uh, not, not exactly necessary for zoning off those last two, but is able to complete uh, that side lane pressure, and they just worked off of both side lanes for so long. This was after Lorlo already had a huge advantage on the top side, uh, and they just rolled that through uh, on the opposite side to get that split push going. And it's interesting to see because high style has almost always been, and we saw it yesterday when he was playing, you know, push the lane in and roam. <laughs> Sindri is capable of doing that, but the fact that Golden Gear was able to get out, intelligently get the fights is really good from him. Yeah, Syndra um, does have to be a little bit more cautious about venturing into Fog of War. Yeah, yeah everyone's all like, oh yeah, all you have to do is press R and you one-shot everybody, right? Well, uh, you have to be a little bit more cautious than that because uh, CC does exist and she's a little squishy early. But yeah, I mean, he, he had a good CS lead in the mid lane, um, but just the effect on the side lanes was way too much uh, for, for him to overcome. Well, our side lane player of the game, of course, is going to be Lola. We're going to take a look at what he did because that was a... Re oh, never mind. We're not going to check that out. But <laughs> we can remember how good Lolo looked. We're going to take a look at the recap of the game, though. Like we said, pretty close, actually, yeah. uh, towards the midsection. And then 10 minutes, just... <laughs> That, that spike right there as well, uh, 32 minutes or so, uh, was where Lorlo really hit that crescendo up at the inhibitor turret. That was the highlight we're not getting. Takes out, yeah, hey, takes down the Guardian Angel of Balls. He's able to take down the turret uh, all by himself. He forces recall so that the rest of the four-man squad, who previously was fighting at Baron, actually got a kill there. Then gets to also get Baron on top of it. 
Uh, and that's really what it, what it looks like. And when we talk about stretching the map with your split pushing, that's exactly the reason. They uh, pressured two objectives on opposite sides. In this scenario, they actually ended up getting both. Usually, you pull off one and you get the other one, but uh, they got victories on both sides, and that's why it ex escalated so quickly. Yeah, and I did feel like, you know, you can maybe criticize Team Liquid for playing too slow, but I think that's actually the correct thing. Hi, still with that game sense, still knowing, okay, we can come back in this game, but Team Liquid, to their credit, never let Hi back into that game despite multiple fights and multiple picks happening. Team Liquid, whenever they were getting attacked, made sure they didn't lose too much and they could still keep the objectives for themselves. Uh, it was a little painful watching Piglet and Matt uh, over and over, just, ah, the Sinja, please stop. <laughs> uh, uh, got a bunch of kills on them, but again, it didn't matter. That wasn't how Team Liquid were going to win the game. They won the game through their split pushing. And Lolo. And flanks. Yes, uh, that's true. I mean, when they had to fight, they did. I think for me, one of the big moments was actually the Baron defense. FlyQuest had that very early Baron, but TL flanked, got a couple picks, and pretty much negated any pressure that Baron was going to offer. Exactly. I mean, so often everyone talks about, yeah, the split pushing and the objectives that you get out of it. Um, it is also a lot about positioning on the map, right? Um, team fighting is is only so good as the setup for the team fight. Uh, no matter who you have, if you're starting it without Maokai or if your backline is getting flanked and there are uh, multiple assassins on the enemy team, then it really just breaks that whole thing apart. Team fighting teams really benefit from order. Uh, and when you introduce multiple angles or it's a little bit of chaos into that, Starts to fall apart. And I think the last thing we haven't touched yet, we'll get there just before we throw to commercial. Bottom lane was actually where we expected a huge mismatch for Lemon and Altec. They lost land to a, a Apollo and Hakaho, which you don't really expect to show a lot. And Matt and Piglet have looked very strong versus CLG. But I mean, maybe it's a matchup thing, maybe it's a jungle presence thing, but that was a very kind of bland lane to be perfectly honest. No one really got super <laughs> far ahead. Yeah, not the not the huge uh, story of the game. I did like the uh, exchanges of ultimates there, you know, and the, the Ash Arrows that were able to gain a bit of pressure, but really what broke the bottom lane open, of course, was the top lane. When yeah. Orlo and them <laughs> came down and Golden Gluk is roaming, uh, that, that was really what the, that power was all about. Turns out the true bottom laner was Lolo, because <laughs> I feel like... What, I he ended what up Lolo's, being a bottom laner. He did. I wonder what total time he spent in the lanes was, because he felt like top for a little while, and then he was definitely staying bottom most of that. But keep it tuned right here, League fans, because the battle between FlyQuest and Liquid returns in just a few. World. We are the best in the world. Balls is literally a I am the best in the world. You literally can't just be I. You have to be we. <laughs> Easy money. And nice stun. Ghost already popped. Golden Gluk could be in trouble trying to get under the W for a shield. Oh. That is still there. Needs a few. Oh, that was the best. First Blood Moon. Good offer from Lemonation. going to knock him away. But Moon forced to burn the Aussie. Piglet down though. That's great news. As now Balls has made his way in. Lolo though looking for the flank. Finds Lemonation. Oh. Oh, the shield. Needs to get it down. Fine, fine, fine. Moves the last final out of the way. Repost is good. That should be a down. Now he's healing up Altec. You better run. Oh, well, Lolo wants it. Going for it all. Kill should be in there. Last final did Lolo. Trying to get out of the pit alive. Piglet oh. on the other side. Goes down to high once again. But Moon is going to fall. Ball's going to get slain there as well. And it's just so much damage to be the Nexus going down. Team Liquid looking good.